In this week's video, I'm taking a step back from landscape photography and I'm delving deeper into a type of photography that I discovered during lockdown last year. I've come armed with my zoom lens and my Nisi close-up lens and I'm off to embrace a part of spring that many of us simply walk by. Now take a few minutes to think back to when you were a child. I'm sure many of you have memories of going pond dipping of watching tadpoles and frogs swimming around. But when we become adults, our interest in these small aspects of nature, the bugs, the insects, the reptiles, it falls by the wayside. Well, last year, one of the ways I coped with lockdown was photographing bugs and insects in my garden and in a tiny pond close to my house. During this process, I captured these images here. I was blown away with what the camera picked up. I never knew tadpoles had these shiny patterns on their body, nor had I ever seen their eyes before. It is amazing what a macro lens or a close-up filter can capture that we are unable to see with our naked eyes. I was mesmerised by this. So now that spring has re-begun and the life cycle of frogs is restarting, I've set myself a spring photography challenge of photographing the life cycle of these frogs at the very pond that this epiphany happened. Over the next few months, I'm going to come here every week and photograph frogs as they turn from frog spawn into tadpoles and hopefully onto frogs themselves. And that journey all begins today. My initial plan for this video was to release a single video at the end of spring featuring all my photographs to showcase the life cycle of the frog. But then I thought that some of you might actually want to do this for yourself and get out to your own local ponds and do something similar with your own macro lenses or close-up filters. So what I thought I'd do today is introduce the topic, get out and take the initial images of the frog spawn, which was only laid a few days ago, and and introduce this topic to you all and hopefully inspire some of you to get out and do this in your own local area. And what I also thought would be quite exciting is if we could find a way of doing this together and sharing our results. So if you have Instagram, I've set up the hashtag KGFrogs. So if you want to follow along and do this for yourself, I'd love you to share your images on Instagram using that hashtag. I'll have a look at them all and then potentially when I release that second video at the end of the season, I'll be able to feature some of your images in it. The ones that I really like and that I think has really captured the essence of the frog's life cycle. So yeah, it'd be great to have some of you on board with that and just get out there and, and enjoy what's on your doorstep and get a bit of creativity going within your photography. and most importantly, to help you connect more deeper with nature this spring. Now I've come up against a few challenges while doing this. So before I showcase to you some of the initial images I've taken of the frog spawn, I wanted to just share some of these challenges with you to give you all something to consider and think about before you head out there on your own tadpole and frog adventures. Now, photographing ponds is not the easiest with regard to getting clean images. Not only are you trying to make sure that the frog spawn or the tadpoles are in focus, and also try and ensure that they're in an interesting shape or you're getting an interesting composition. You know, on top of that, you're battling with much debris, plants and bubbles that are also in the water. And on top of that, a big challenge is the reflections that are being caused or reflected, should I say, onto the surface of the water by the sun. In landscape photography, I would overcome this by putting a polarizer on the end of my camera. But as I've got this close up lens on the end of my actual zoom lens, it's not really possible to do that. Potentially, I don't know, there might be some sort of adapter or something that I can get to do that with. But with a kit I've got just now, that's not possible. So um, yeah, battling against these reflections is proving to be very difficult. Another issue I'm finding is in stabilising my camera and battling against the shadows and the lack of light that is created at certain parts of the pond. 
Now again in landscape photography I'd compensate for this by using a tripod to allow me to use much longer shutter speeds without causing any blurring of my images. But the issue here is that a lot of the best frog spawn is actually quite deep into the pond which means I'm having to lean in over the pond in order to get them both in focus and get a really interesting composition. And because of this it's not really possible to use a tripod which means I'm having to bump my ISO up higher in order to allow me to use much faster shutter speeds and not get any blurring of my images. Getting good images here is therefore very difficult but that's part of the challenge. Ultimately my main goal here is to be able to see this hidden world within the pond that I'm unable to see with my naked eye and can only see by using something like this close-up lens. If I get some good photographs on top of that it's really going to be a bonus. So with all that considered let the photography begin. Now what I found so fascinating by doing this was delving into this hidden world of the frog spawn within the pond. Some of the frog spawn was very freshly laid and you could see just these small dots in the centre of them, while others were beginning to evolve into these tiny little tadpoles that I could see moving around within the frog spawn itself. I'm now gonna share with you the images that I took during this afternoon to showcase the beginning journey of a frog's life. You will see some of these images were very difficult to compose and get crisp and clean, but what is hidden within them, including a few wood lice, is pretty fascinating. I wouldn't say I'm over the moon with the images I got today, but it's definitely a nice exciting learning curve and something different to help me connect more deeply with nature this spring. And I really hope that some of you will follow along on this and do something similar in your own local ponds. And it'd be really interesting to see what we can come up with and what stories we can create by doing this. So remember, hashtag over Instagram, Look forward to hopefully seeing some of you over there and I'm also excited to see how my photography skills in this genre and the stories I'm able to tell, how they unfold over the course of spring and I'm excited to share that with you at the end of the season. As always, I want to say a huge thank you for watching. Next week I'll be back out in the landscape doing some normal stuff and I look forward to hopefully seeing you all again then. Mm -hmm.